Alright folks, we're back. This is the penultimate episode of Donkey Kong Country, and uh, we've got some stuff underway here. So we will head to Chimp Caverns, which actually has a little bit of spiciness itself. And, uh, you know, this is basically about it for the game. You know, that's the thing, I mean, as much as I like Donkey Kong Country 2, which I actually like better than this game, I wish that we would have had, like, a similar template as this game for, like, a sequel. Because, you know, most of the time when there's sequels, there's always something new. They don't have, like, the same engine. Like, if they would have made another Super Mario Bros. 3 game with those same graphics and stuff, rather than making new graphics and new engine and stuff, uh, I would like that. And that is kind of the situation, because I just feel like this game needed more than six worlds. I mean, there's how many more things they could have done. They could have had them be at, like, the beach. You know, there is a beach on Donkey Kong Island, so they could have done that. And they could have had, like, uh... Like, plenty of other stages, you know, like a... Like a flowery stage, and, uh... Like, stages at nighttime and that sort of shit, I mean. But obviously, I don't know, just kind of... I mean, that's why sometimes things feel like they're kind of in a rush, just because you get these things, but you don't get, like... I mean, how many games is Donkey Kong actually playable in like he was in Donkey Kong Country? I mean, it took all the way until Donkey Kong Country Returns to have that happen. So, I guess he was in Donkey Kong 64, but... Very sparse, you know? Rareware kind of had a lot to do with this game's success. I mean, I don't know. I've never played the Donkey Kong Country Returns series, so I don't know if it actually lives up to its legacy, but these games, I mean, at least the Donkey Kong Country Trilogy do. They're all over 8 out of 10 in quality. This is where things kind of start getting screwy. You basically do need that tire. That's kind of the thing. So, you gotta remember that all the stops are pulled out at World 6. So... But yeah, after this next episode, I've got my next Let's Play that I'm going to do, and this is, of course, a new test for me, because I've never actually beaten this game before. So it should be interesting just to see. I think I could basically take care of most of the game, besides, like, maybe the final boss. Which that happens to me so frequently. I always manage to do everything but that last boss or that last stage, so it'd be nice to be able to beat that game. But we'll see. I'm gonna at least I'm gonna give it a lot. I mean, even if the final episode of that comes out like four months later, I'm still gonna do it. You know, it's something to work towards. Barrel cannons kind of disappear after, uh, you know, after the snow world. That was a tricky part right there. Yep. <laughs> That'll be a little bit quicker on your toes and such. Tanked up trouble. Like, shut up, rareware. <laughs> you know, you gotta tell that to him every now and then. That's a nice burp. I had donuts this morning. I haven't had those in a long time. Powdered donuts. Almost ate the whole bag, but then that wouldn't be a good idea. If you watch my vlog channel, you should know that, but I at least have a few. I don't know if I feel like this game is a classic. It is good, but there's just things about it that piss me off. I, mean, I, I respect it just because it went real forward with the idea behind the platformer, but it's still virtually, I mean, I just feel like the game can get cheap at times, you know, and Mario didn't really do that that much. 
mean, if that's my only complaint, I mean, obviously that might just be opinionated, but it just depends. I mean, when you play this game, you realize that, you know, some of the things that are tripping you up are just due to enemy placement, and this is kind of like, well... So they put another one in that one almost, but a second one there, that was kind of cheap. That almost gave me a game over, and I would have had to do that whole world over again. But, this is the last stage that Rambi's in. Isn't that crazy? Your last animal buddy was also your first animal buddy. But, unfortunately, I don't have him for very long. I tried to get him. <laughs> I like this stage. This is like a uh, real nice shade of green and shit. They give you a lot of TNT barrels. I'm trying to figure out, you know. been some stuff that's been going on. You now the news has just been having a field day with all the politically charged and just emotion, raw emotion. It's not just emotion, this is raw emotion. Like where I live in my hometown there were some people that threw kittens out the window and shit. You know, they reported their driver's license but they haven't gotten arrested yet. <laughs> I, was just, I was just like, yeah, you know, throwing kittens out of the window on the highway, you know is for them to get splattered at 80 miles per hour by the next car, you know, but the raw emotion on, like, the regular news between whether or not people support Juneteenth and then Trump's rally in Tulsa for people in America, you know, minus, you know, that, that rally wouldn't be that much of a problem, you know, without the fact of coronavirus being so prevalent, which is starting in the United States is starting to pop up. This is like the second wave that wasn't supposed to start until autumn. Well, it's starting in the middle of June. So this is a lot of raw emotion. That's not something I typically like. Things are getting too personal, too raw, too unhinged. You know, we need to go back to the way that things were in April. That was more palpable. Huh. But yeah, you basically have to go through that door to get to that ditty barrel. And you can die if you get hit here, so it's not a bonus room. I <laughs> see. I don't know what the point of that TNT barrel was. Like, well, why the fuck did you give me that when there's nothing to destroy with it? Maybe that wall right there, I don't know, but... Have a TNT barrel, you might need it. Oh. This is the last stage you have to do before you can save, so if you're kind of bent out of shape about that, you know. This one isn't too terrible. I don't really get the bonus areas, I'm just like, fuck it, I just don't want to have to keep replaying these and such. I noticed that those enemies that you have to hit the stop and go buttons to make them stop moving, those guys were only in one stage. I don't know why they didn't use them again. That would have been a nice stage for these guys. <laughs> I'll tell you, it would have really pissed me off having to hit that in this stage also, but they're really only in one stage. I mean, they get they, they get their own name in the credits, but I don't know. I, I don't like when video games underuse enemies. I mean, maybe if you hate them enough, that could be the reason why, but they should at least make two appearances or something, or three. 
know, these beavers are in a lot of stages, and so are the, you know, so many other ones. So. Just like what I was talking about when you saw Rambi back there, I mean, it had been since, like, World 3 or World 2 since I had seen him before that. And then the frog wasn't in anything. But really, I mean, you see the swordfish in every water stage, but that's kind of the one you don't want to see. <laughs> Thing. I mean, it's nice to have them, but I mean, I like Rambi much more. So obviously, when you fight these armadillo enemies, you want to use Donkey Kong, but sometimes you can't switch. I mean, you can't really switch characters on the barrels, and they do that purposefully. I guess we do do one more stage, so... I'm gonna go back to World 5 and save, homie. Uh, you know, it's kind of funny, because I didn't catch this one at any point when I played this game. There was, like, one message. I don't know when I did it, but, like, uh, Funky Kong's like, Hey dudes, tell Candy Kong if if you if she ever needs a surfing lesson, so that was kind of his way of hitting on her. I mean, the girl is typically seen as like Donkey Kong's girlfriend. See this one right here. He was like, "Tell Candy if you ever see her, I'll give her surfing lessons anytime." <laughs> you know, so Funky Kong is kind of being saucy there. It's like, I mean, obviously anyone would, but this is kind of funny. I didn't. Uh, that was like the first time I ever caught that message. I've had this game since it came out. <laughs> this stage is a bastard, though, because it turns off the lights and. I hate those jumping ones. They they jump when you press the jump button, so that's the way they're programmed to do it. So you have to be even more uh, you know, decisive with your jumps. Alright, there's the midway point, so we're almost done with this episode. Another minute, we should be out. <laughs> oh. This is somewhat of a dark game. I mean, I, I do feel like... It's not just like eight year olds and twelve year olds who can play this game. I mean this basically speaks to all ages. You know. I mean it's a tough enough game. I don't know how many seven year olds can sit there and say that they can beat this game. I mean games have kind of gotten easier and there's just you know, how many games do you have five lives and one ups in anymore? That's the thing in the nineties. That was definitely what I grew up in, is trying to say, hey, you got five lives when you die, it's game over. If you don't get to a save point, you're doing it all over again. So, Fortnite can never do that. <laughs> so, I don't hate Fortnite, it is kind of like hell. I mean, it is revolutionized, like, 2017 forward gaming so much. I mean, it's like, if you don't have these same mechanics, if you don't have these same mechanics, you're, you know, in problems.